Hi, this is Anne with a quick destination check video on this week's drawing exercises. This is our last um, week of coding assignments for this semester. And this exercise is intended to be challenging, um, asking you to integrate um, uh, both a bunch of things we've been doing over time, and then also be able to learn new things off the web, which is a critical skill for um, for coding um, through no matter what language you're working in. But I think it will be easier to stay the course if you have a good sense of where you're going. So I'm deliberately not going to show any code in this um, video. I'm going to give you a sense of where you're headed and, get, and help you figure out, um, just be able to keep in mind what things should look like as you go along. So um, the only code I guess I am going to show is this one first starting um, index.html, just pointing out that you need to make sure that you are pointing at your scripts that you've brought in. Um, point you should be able to pick up from any of our previous exercises. Pixel and draw.js you're creating from scratch in this exercise. And um, I have four uh, different folders here you're only going to generate three. Um, I'm going to demo four versions of the page, one with static draw, one showing you the same page, but in sort of a debug mode that I think is a little bit easier to work with, um, the on-click draw and the on-mouse down draw. So um, the destination check for the A task is simply to create your own color version of this drawing. Basically, you'll have code that um, toggles the color, well, the most important code is to create this map of pixels and draw the background color one uh, throughout the canvas. And then you have a little bit of code that toggles um, the color in each of these four corner pixels, a row and a column. And you can see that if you toggle the same pixel twice, it goes from, first time it goes from color one to color two, and then from color two back to color one. And so that's why you end up with this yellow in the middle where the two lines cross. Now, I think it's a little hard um, to envision what's going on as you're building this code with um, it looking just like that. So uh, the draw function that I gave you um, has a, um, has code in it that will um, do this version. So this has the same draw.js, but the pixel class draw method has, um, has code in it to show you the upper left point coordinates of each pixel square and also to outline them. So it's a little bit easier as you're building this code to just simply have fewer, larger pixels, and then also be able to see what you've assigned to them for upper left corner coordinates. Um, but how to say this, in an abstract sense, this picture and that picture are exactly the same. It's just that this one shows you debugging information and outlines and has a larger pixel size, and this is more like what you'd use for actual drawing. The second B task is to go from having a design on the canvas at all to starting with a blank canvas and being able to click specific pixels and a little bit tediously be able to draw yourself a pattern. So once you get this code working, spend a little bit of time drawing some sort of nice pattern that you like. Um, it's kind of a nice breather and exercise. Really, getting this much code to work is probably at least half um, of this exercise, uh, maybe even two-thirds. Because once you have a well-behaved pixel, um, getting it to respond to certain events is really not all that hard. Now, the third C task is to take that same canvas, the same pixel, change which mouse you, events you're dealing with, and make it so that um, if I move my mouse over the canvas, nothing happens. But if I hold down my left mouse button, I can actually draw. 
And, um, and here's where you begin to be able to do more interesting pictures. You've got a double click function that allows you to clean up the drawing. And you probably need to come up, depending on your pixel size that you decide to use, you probably need to come up with a particular speed that works for you. If you go too fast, your line's gonna be a little bit um, jaggedy. So that's where you're headed. Um, one thing I would point out is this morning, I realized, um, I found out, that this code is not working very well in Firefox. And so you may need to use Chrome to get this behavior right. One way you can tell is that the slides um, give you a link to this tester code in JS Fiddle. Um, and I, I think we've used JS Fiddle so far this semester, but if not, just remember that there are different ways this page can be arranged. And I think for this version, you probably want the results on the right. So it looks a little bit more like the previews we get in Cloud9. And then you just want to make sure that you've got, um, you're seeing all the JavaScript so that um, you really don't need to see much of the CSS or the JavaScript. In fact, I think in your version of this, of this week's exercise, you don't have a CSS file at all. In Chrome, what you'll find is as I move my mouse button over this um, canvas, this blue canvas, these values are not changing. But if I hold my mouse, value, my mouse down, you can see that the client location and the canvas location change. So this canvas offset, these are fixed values. They essentially just say where the canvas starts on the web page. So its upper left corner is at 1031, which is values you need when you're trying to convert from the client location to the canvas location. Don't worry about this until you get to step three, task C, but do know that if um, you've got a browser where when you're just moving your mouse around without holding the left button down, that's going to mess up the way your task C works. And what I was seeing this morning was that in the current version of Firefox, um, I was getting these numbers to be changing even when I didn't have my mouse down. So I highly recommend Chrome for this exercise. Um, and if that's a problem, you can contact me. Um, I don't know why anybody wouldn't be able to install Chrome even if you haven't so far this semester. So good luck with the, with the exercise. Um, it, should be, it should be challenging. Um, it should be interesting, and, I, and in general, when people get through this first stage and they've got the canvas painting and everything, they really rather like this exercise. So I hope you enjoy it.